Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, I want to talk about exact equations. And this is going to be a new type of differential equations or a new form that we are going to learn how to solve. So if we take a look at a roadmap of what we've covered so far, we've started with this form right here and we learned the separable and non-separable cases which correspond to straight up integration and integrating factors respectively. And then we've also, in the previous video, we took a look at differential equations of this form where we can express y prime is equal to a function of y over x. And we refer to this class of differential equations as the homogeneous differential equations, where we use a change of variables and let v equal y over x so that we can manipulate this differential equation into a separable form that we can solve. So in this video, we're going to add another type and we're going to add the exact equation form. And we will go over what defines this form and how we can go about solving it. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at this form of a differential equation, where psi is the unknown function that we are solving for. And it is a function of x and y, where y is also a function of x. So this is the guy that we are looking for, and this is the form of the differential equation, which we refer to as an exact equation that we are going to be solving. So what this means is the partial derivative with respect to x of psi plus the partial derivative with respect to y of psi times dy dx is equal to zero. If we have a differential equation of this form, then we can solve it. So typically we define psi sub x as a function m, which is a function of x and y, and we define psi sub y as the function n, which is a function of x and y. So really we can just rewrite this equation as m of x, y plus n of x, y dy dx is equal to zero. And this is often how we arbitrarily define an exact equation. Now I want to emphasize that both of these functions, m and n, must come from the same function psi, meaning that m must be psi sub x and n must be psi sub y. So what we need to do before we can use this strategy that we are about to go over is that we need to verify that m and n both represent the partial derivatives of an unknown function psi. And the way that we do that is we make use of an idea that we learned in calculus, which is the fact that all mixed partials of a function are equal to each other if that function is continuous and differentiable, which means that psi sub x y has to equal psi sub y x. And if this is true, then we call the equation exact and we can solve this equation using a technique that we are about to go over. So this step right here is just verifying that we can in fact use the technique that we're about to learn and it verifies that these two functions m and n do in fact come from the same function psi. So really what we're checking is the partial derivative of m with respect to y has to equal the partial derivative of n with respect to x. And this is equivalent to saying this. So the first step that we do is we check this and if it is true, then that means it is exact and that we can go ahead and proceed with our solution. So the next thing that we do is we take our function psi sub x, which is just m, our function m, and then we integrate it with respect to x. So this is equivalent to integrating psi sub x, or in other words, we can write as d psi dx, the partial derivative of psi with respect to x, dx. And we can see that this integral evaluates to a function of x and y, plus a function of integration that is only a function of y. So instead of getting a constant of integration, since we are dealing with partial derivatives and integration with respect to a single variable, then what we get is a function of integration. And we can think about it like this. If I take this expression and now I differentiate it with respect to x, so I undo this operation in this step, then this entire term will go away, just like a constant would, because it is a function of purely y, and whenever we differentiate it with respect to x, we treat the other variables like y as a constant. So that's why when I integrate with respect to x, I get an entire function of y. And this is all equal to our function that we are solving for, which is psi. And again, the reason why this is equal to psi is because we just took psi, differentiated with respect to x, 
and we integrated with respect to x. So of course it's going to come out to our function psi. So now we have psi in terms of a function x, y that we know, but we also have this arbitrary function of y that we do not know and that we need to solve for before we can actually come up with an expression for our psi. So we come down to the next step and what we do is we take a result and from the previous step and we differentiate it with respect to y. So I have the partial derivative of f of x, y plus g of y and I differentiate this with respect to y and since this is equivalent to taking the partial derivative of psi since it equals psi then this comes out to be psi sub y but wait I already have an expression for psi sub y which comes from our function n because I've been purely dealing with our function m right now so we took m we integrated with respect to x and then we differentiated with respect to y and that has to equal n. So I can now take this expression and set it equal to our function n that is given. And what this allows me to do is this allows me to solve for g of y. And once I solve for g of y, I come back up here and I plug it in right here. And now I have a, a solution for psi. I have an entire expression for psi. Now I do want to point out, instead of leaving our solution in this form like that I have defined, f of x, y plus g of y is equal to psi, what we do is we implicitly define this function as equal to a constant c. And the reason why we do that is because, well, we, can, we just considered a different equation of this form right here, right? Well, I can actually rewrite this as the partial derivative with respect to x of psi of x and y of x. So this statement is equivalent to this statement and we can verify that using the chain rule and, and differentiation that we learned in calculus. So really when we're solving an exact differential equation we are really solving an equation that is of this form right here. So when we integrate both sides what we get is we get our function psi of x and y of x and we also get this constant of integration on this side and that's why we implicitly define our solution by setting it equal to c, a constant. So I know this is a lot of information and I know this is probably confusing by now but like I said before this is actually one of the harder forms of differential equations that we're going to learn and part of that is because well it's nonlinear and also the math behind it can be a little complicated and hard to follow sometimes. But in the next couple of videos, I'm going to make sure that I do a good job of working through examples and pointing out the process and the mathematical concepts behind solving these kinds of problems. But this video is just to serve as an introduction to exact equations. So before we end, I feel like it'd be beneficial just to run through a mock example. So let's say that we have a different equation of this form right here. And let's pretend that it is non-separable and it is not of the form y prime plus a of x y is equal to b of x. So it's not of this form, it's not separable, and it is also non-homogeneous. So our next go-to move is to determine whether or not this equation is exact. And the way we do that is we take these two functions and we differentiate m with respect to y and n with respect to x, and we check to see if these are equal. If they are, then we say, okay, this is exact, and now I can proceed with solving this. So that was the first step. So the second thing that I do is I take our function m, and I integrate it with respect to x. And the result is going to give me some function of x and y plus an arbitrary function of integration, which is just a function of y. And then what I do is I take that result and now I differentiate it with respect to y. And then I set this result equal to n. And then from there, I just solve for g of y using this equation from part three. And once I have an expression for g of y, I come back in here and plug it in there and I take this and I set it equal to c and I take that as our solution. Now, alternatively, I can start with n. I'm not limited to only dealing with m 
and then working my way to n, what I can do is I can start with n, but since n really represents psi sub y, what I do is I integrate n with respect to y, which gives me some function p of x, y, plus q of x, where q of x now is our arbitrary function of integration. And then I can come to the next step and I differentiate. Instead of differentiating with respect to y, I differentiate with respect to x, and I differentiate our result from the previous step. And I set it equal to m. And I use this equation to solve for q of x. And then I take q of x and I plug it back in here. And I take q of x and I plug it back into our expression from part two. And then I take this as an, our, our example and I set it equal to c. So we can see that we can work from both sides. It doesn't really matter. And typically we start with a side that is easier to integrate. Differentiation is a lot easier, but integration can be a lot harder. So whichever function, m or n, is easier to integrate, typically that's the side that we start on. But either way, we will arrive to the same solution, meaning our expression for f plus g is equal to c is going to be equivalent to p plus q is equal to c. So it doesn't matter which side that we start from. So anyway, thanks for watching, and in the next couple of videos, we're going to cover a couple examples on this. And if you guys have any questions, or any, if any of this doesn't make any sense, feel free to leave a comment or send me a message, and I will get back to you.